Okay, I'm in the woods not far from the Leatherman's Cave and that pile of rocks that you're looking at are rocks that covered the body of Joseph Scott. He was killed by the Indians right here back in either late 1707 or very early uh, 1708. And what happened, the Indians came down from Canada and they kidnapped him and they started marching him through the woods. Undoubtedly his hands were tied but he started yelling and screaming, hoping that somebody nearby would hear him. Which would have been a pretty good trick because Waterbury was just a tiny settlement and it's about 10 miles to the south of here. So nobody heard him, but the Indians still wanted to quiet him down. So they cut his tongue out and he bled to death. His body was found by either family members or other people from the Waterbury area, which, uh, of which Watertown was part of Waterbury back then. And... Uh, his body was in such bad shape because the animals had been feeding on him that they decided not to move him and they just buried him here. And you've got all these rocks that have been here for 304 years or thereabout and they've been tumbled down and they've been eroded and they've been burrowing animals and uh, forest fires and everything that could possibly happen to a pile of rocks in the woods has probably happened right here. So it doesn't look like the neat mound of rocks that it might have looked like back in 17. 07 or 1708. Uh, this site was used as a boundary marker for property owners in the area uh, and so it was in the books but it was lost and when Anderson wrote the history of Waterbury back in 1897 he did not know where this site was. In fact apparently nobody did. Uh, when they came through and they cut all the trees in these woods probably sometime in the uh, between 1900 and 1920, they probably discovered the grave again. And it appeared in a newspaper article sometime after that. And one of the things mentioned in the newspaper article was this big tree. And people would come out a trail, goes right by the grave and the tree, and they would visit Scott's grave. And somebody carved the story of Scott's murder here in the woods in this tree. And I don't know if you can see it with the way the sun is shining on it right at the moment. It's the late afternoon or mid-afternoon sun shining. But there is right here. And then it goes down and it circled around. It's sort of a spot where they peeled the bark off and carved it in. Now they probably just wrote, uh, this is Joseph Scott's grave killed by the Indians and then gave the year. They didn't really write a whole story here. But people would come through quite often on horseback. And so we think we see signs of some scribbling up there. Somebody might have actually been on horseback when they did a little carving in the tree as well. But the newspaper article mentions this tree and the fact that the story of Scott was etched into the tree. And this is 2012. And I'm pleased to say that we have rediscovered the site. And nobody has been here. Nobody has seen this or has known what it was for perhaps 70 years. So back to the tree that told the story, told the story of Scott's grave. Uh, we'd estimate it to be about 60 or 70 feet tall and it is eight feet around at the base down here, well about arm level. And it is 30 feet from the grave. And this grave is so well camouflaged that you almost have to be there in order to actually see it. And there you have the story of the death of Joseph Scott of Watertown, Connecticut.